Here's what's coming up on today's Airborne. The threat of sequestration is hitting the air show industry hard. Bendix King expands the My Wingman app. And SpaceX's Dragon is to return to the ISS on March 1st. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. The air show industry is in a flat spin as we again near the edge of the fiscal cliff and the sequestration it will bring about. ANN is tracking an unsettling number of events, air shows, and open houses that either have or soon will be preparing cancellation notices. So far, about a half dozen major events are either getting cut or cut back due to Pentagon directives or fear of financial loss imposed by the cancellation of military participation in their events. ANN has confirmed reports of the cancellation of aviation events at a number of major military bases, such as Luke Air Force Base's Storm on the Horizon, which had been scheduled from March 16th through the 17th. Joint Base Langley also announced Friday it was canceling their Langley Air Show, which had originally been scheduled for May 3rd through the 5th, and the Wings Over Wayne Air Show, which was scheduled for May at Seymour F. Johnson Air Force Base, has also been canceled. Spokespersons for Oceana Naval Air Station also admitted that their event was probably on the chopping block. The loss of these events creates a costly and damaging trickle-down effect in the form of direct economic losses felt by supporting local businesses and communities, not to mention the loss of opportunities to gain public interest and support for the aviation industry. ANN will continue to follow this developing story. Honeywell's Bendix King Division has revealed that you can now touch and go even farther with the new My Wingman iPad app software version 1.1 update. The My Wingman app now supports altitude and heading reference sensors, delivering improved user interfaces and provides greater flight planning flexibility. It also brings new remarkable levels of flight planning, navigation, efficiency and situational awareness into the cockpit. The update makes My Wingman even more simple, intuitive, and powerful, with multiple improvements over the initial release. This update, combined with the touch-and-go simplicity of features such as advanced synthetic vision, flight plan filing, smart routing, and flexible split-screen views, put the very latest in flight planning right at a pilot's fingertips. This iPad app software upgrade can be downloaded at the Apple Store. Pilots can download a free 60-day trial of the app, also at the Apple App Store. In addition, Bendix King has revealed it will be a sponsor of Rob Holland's Ultimate Air Shows for 2013. NASA and its international partners are targeting Friday, March 1st as the launch date for the next cargo resupply flight to the International Space Station by SpaceX. Launch is scheduled from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. SpaceX's Dragon capsule will be filled with about 1,200 pounds of supplies for the space station crew and experiments being conducted aboard the orbiting laboratory. Dragon is scheduled to return to Earth March 25th for a parachute-assisted splashdown in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Baja, California. It will be bringing back about 2,300 pounds of experiment samples and equipment. Just a week after announcing their move to a new 70,000 square foot facility and the St. Lucie County Airport in Fort Pierce, Florida, Renegade Light Sport Aircraft said that it's getting set to manufacture the first Renegade Carbon Pits LS-1 and LS-2 aircraft. Renegade has elected to end their partnership with the FK-12 European product and has decided to build an all-U.S. manufactured airframe. With Renegade's well-known expertise with the Lycoming LSA engine configuration, the LS-1 will be a light sport compliant single and the LS-2 a two-seat fully aerobatic LSA aircraft. Philip Wyatt, director of marketing for Renegade, commented, quote, this is yet another bold move to bring a 100% American-made, like-homing-powered aircraft to the LSA market." End quote. 
The Carbon Pits LSA will be revised into a Seconite fabric over carbon fiber construction and will be powered by the Lycoming AEIO 233 fuel injected fully aerobatic electronic ignition engine. The Renegade Pits will have a much wider cabin and superior weight to horsepower ratio. The Carbon Pits models will be added to the company's Lycoming powered light sport aircraft fleet. Renegade says it is fully on track to realize its plans of developing a full range of fantastic American-made Lycoming-powered light sport aircraft. Renegade plans to bring the Carbon Pits line into conformity with the ASTM F-37 standards by the spring of 2013. You're watching Airborne, more in a moment. Since its inception, Redbird Flight Simulations has been dedicated to developing new training technologies and processes in an ongoing effort to make aviation safer, more affordable, and more accessible. We're using technology to make this kind of training accessible to all flight schools of all sizes and all budgets, and to democratize flying in general because we make this kind of training more accessible to people. For more information about Redbird Flight Simulations as well as Redbird's new Skyport, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com or www.redbirdskyport.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne Aero TV, our website or podcast, drop us an email to news spy at aero news.net. Well, there have been many stories, some of them reported here on ANN, about the potential cancellation of air show performances by military jet demo teams like the Blue Angels and the Thunderbirds. But for now, all four branches of the U.S. military remain hopeful that sequestration-related budget cuts will be avoided between now and the March 1st deadline. Indeed, most are proceeding as though the air show season will continue just as planned. This week, U.S. Air Force Air Combat Command released the 2013 performance schedule for the F-22 Raptor. On its website, the International Council of Air Shows reports the military's senior leadership is also making contingency plans in the event politicians do not reach some agreement. As it relates to airshow activities specifically, the current plan is to continue airshow training and participation through March 31st and then end it on April 1st. This would include suspending performances by the Blue Angels and the Thunderbirds, as well as single ship demo performances, static display participation, and previously scheduled air shows and open houses at military bases. If the sequestration mandated cuts are subsequently restored, some of the air show activities, like the training and performance of the two U.S. military jet teams, may resume following a period of retraining. How do you make an airplane with a longer wingspan acceptable to airports for which it is currently approved? One answer might be to make the airplane with folding wingtips, which is just reportedly what Boeing is considering for its updated version of the 777. The new model, currently called the 777X, would have an increased wingspan in an effort to boost fuel efficiency. By allowing those wingtips to fold, the aircraft would be able to operate at airports currently served by the 777. Reuters reports that Boeing's president of marketing for commercial airplanes, Randy Tenseth, said at a recent aerospace conference in Seattle that the 777X is on schedule for deliveries to begin in 2020, but would not confirm the inclusion of the folding wingtips. Tensif said that the company's prime focus right now is on getting the Dreamliner back into service. It was not clear how issues with the 787 might affect the 777X program, or whether airlines would embrace the level of complexity that the folding wingtip feature might bring to the new airliner. The FAA has issued a special airworthiness information bulletin for Cessna Aircraft Company models 172RG, R182, TR182, 
FR-182-210N, T-210N, 210R, T-210R, P-210N, P-210R, and T-303 airplanes. The bulletin addresses an airworthiness concern regarding landing gear hydraulic power pack systems. The FAA has received a report of an accident involving a Cessna Aircraft Company model 172RG airplane, where a fire started in flight on the cabin side of the firewall and rapidly accelerated. The fire originated from the areas of the landing gear's hydraulic power pack system, and it resulted in a complete hull loss with reported injuries. The investigation concluded that a potential ignition source may result from improper installation of the terminal lugs and improper installation of or missing terminal covers, and associated wiring to the landing gear hydraulic power pack motor, which was not properly protected or adequately secured. To deal with this issue, Cessna issued service letter MEL-2901, dated July 14, 2012, for the applicable multi-engine aircraft, and service letter SEL-2901, dated July 16, 2012, for the applicable single-engine aircraft. The FAA recommends owners and operators comply with those letters. And now it's time for our Aero Video of the Week. While you're out for a weekend of fun flying, when the engine on your biplane quits, you make a safe open field landing, but then how do you get the airplane home? Why? You fly it, of course. And you'll see how it's done in this week's Aero Video of the Week. Just search YouTube for Stamp Rescue Biplane Airlifted by Helicopter. The FAA is refining its GA Airport study after finding that some just didn't fit into established categories. Tom Patton explains. The FAA is beginning the second phase of its general aviation study issued last spring titled General Aviation Airports a National Asset. The study was developed to further define the roles of GA airports. In the original study, the FAA captured the critical and diverse roles of the nation's 2,952 general aviation airports, which resulted in four new categories, national, regional, local, and basic. But while completing the study, the FAA learned that more than 497 airports did not clearly fit into any of those categories. So the agency has resumed its work with airport sponsors, state aeronautic divisions, and the industry to gather additional information about these airports. The FAA, working with its state partners, the individual airports, and the GA community, now hopes to better define an appropriate category for those undetermined airports. The FAA anticipates issuing an addendum to the study in December with this new information. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. The Belarusian video game company that was backing a search in Myanmar for as many as 140 supermarine Spitfires thought to be buried in crates as World War II was drawing to a close has pulled its financial backing from the project. In a statement released to the media, Wargaming.net said that, quote, the team now believes, based on clear documentary evidence, as well as the evidence from the fieldwork, that no Spitfires were delivered in crates and buried, end quote. But the local partners in Myanmar don't plan to give up on the search, according to a report appearing in the Associated Press. Local company Tutu Zaw, which had been working with British farmer and Spitfire enthusiast David Kundal on the project, said that the video game company pulled up stakes before a complete survey of the possible burial site was finished. Well, that's our program for Tuesday, February 19th. Remember, you can get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.